Welcome back. We're finishing up our segment here with uh, Dran coach Brian Timmerman, and we're going to turn our attention to Mid Prairie. Um, Mid Prairie came in last Friday, and excuse me, this past Tuesday, uh, the 22nd. Um, Mid Prairie's uh, team has kind of been hovering around 500 most of this year. They have a new coach, uh, Coach Kern, has taken over for Coach Showalter, who moved on to City High. Um, still, they still play tough. They still are Mid Prairie in a sense that. Uh, they're not going to roll over, pretty much. Uh, you kind of saw that here on Tuesday. Um, you guys kind of were in control, and they just kept kept after it. I mean, um, toward the end there, I mean, they just kept. I mean, they not that you guys gave up. I'm not suggesting that by any stretch. Um, but when you're down on the road, if you're going to give up, it's easier to do that in that situation, and they just didn't do that. Um, you guys led uh, 11 to seven after the first quarter. Had a 24 to 17 lead at halftime, 31-29 um, lead going into the fourth quarter, and then uh, fourth quarter they outscored you 11 to six to take a three point um, victory. Um, last second shot didn't go, um, so everything's going pretty well. And then the offense kind of trailed off. Unfortunately, uh, maybe you don't get to the foul line as much as you want to toward the end there too. Um, Tough loss. Yeah, you know, we shot a better percentage, and I thought in the first half, I thought we were getting a lot of the same looks in the second half. The shots weren't falling for us, um, but I could tell in the first half when we were getting a lot of shots to fall. You know, it's it's not something we can rely on. And if we are getting shots to fall all game like that, that's when we're going to win. You know, but uh, in the second half. Mid Prairie started playing a little bit better defense. Um, we couldn't get some shots to fall, and then I think it was it was like 32-34, or maybe even 30 to 34. We were up with like four minutes to go, and uh, with the final score being 37-40, you know they go on a 10 to three run to finish the game. Um, you know we watched that we watched the film last night. Uh, before practice, and I was, you know, we, we looked at the score and said, "Okay, guys, here's the situation." You know, um, and then we watched each possession, and it would be a turnover, or, you know, uh, we I think we missed three shots, and we had three turnovers in the last uh, four minutes, and that's. It's not a recipe to win the game. No, <laughs> to be honest. So that's how you know that's the recipe to lose the game. So, well, uh, got to give Mid Prairie a lot of credit. They they closed us out. They did a nice job of finishing the game, um, and they've played a lot of close games. And we have played a few close ones, but uh, I think they like they played. They lost Regina by two, and then they lost Cedar Valley Christian by three. They lost to Wilton by two. Um, and this was all a couple weeks before right. they came and played us. So, you know, the more experience in those close games really pays off. And uh, we had the ball down one with a minute to go and ran some offense. And it didn't look like anybody was too ready to shoot. And then we ran it all the way down to to 30 seconds. And, and um, I was thinking about taking a timeout, but I wanted to, to trust the boys that, that we could get a good shot. You know, and um, if we scored, we were going to take a timeout. Um, but we ended up hitting Barton Hagen on a back door, and they collapsed on him. And uh, he kind of bobbled it and ended up getting called for a travel. I think we kind of gave it to him in a bad spot um, with the situation down one, running offense for 30 seconds, and then we hit that pass. And, and um, then we had to foul. They made two free throws. We had to come down and try to get a three. Um, we got a decent look with about five seconds, and that was off the mark. Anyway, they end up having the ball. Uh, we fouled with 1.3 left, and um, they missed the front end of one and one full court shot off the mark, and uh, that was that was all she wrote. Matt Nissen led you guys with 14 points. Adam Barnhagen had nine. Vaughn had seven. Uh, Justin Schaefer, four points, eight rebounds. Logan the Friends, three points. That's all the scoring. All 
all the scoring came from the starters on Tuesday. Um, just another line in the recipe, maybe, <laughs> not to pile on here by any stretch. Um, they uh, beat you guys 60 to 42 down there in early December. You guys came out and showed them, hey, you know, you weren't that. You guys have improved. You weren't that team they saw last December. Um, can you take anything from that as you look forward to? I mean, if there's any silver linings in this game, is that one of them? Or yeah, we took care of the ball better in the full court when they pressed us. They were creating offense with their defense, um, getting steals in the full court press, and we made some adjustments um, and we were able to break the press. Not easily, but uh, a lot better than we did at Mid-Prairie. And that's how we, we kept their score score lower. Were you pretty happy with your half-court defense once they ran off? <coughs> the Is that part of that too or not? Yeah, I thought we played pretty good half-court defense. Because um, if they're not scoring in the half-court, I mean, that's percentage swing to you guys. Yep, they got a couple, couple fast break. Um, they hit a three in transition, and they got a couple layups in transition. And that's something that's seven points, you know, in transition. And then they got, I think, four off of offensive rebounds. And once you start breaking everything down, when points are at a premium like that, you know, um, 10 points a quarter, it's, you know, every possession is so huge. And, and uh, you know, if you go for a steal, and it leaves somebody open for a three, and they knock it down. That's uh, that's huge. Every you know every basket is so meaningful in these low scoring games that uh, we gotta we gotta take care of business to, uh, and hold on to the ball. Well, let's uh, look ahead. You guys have um, six games left. Um, four of them here in the span of eight days. I I think I count right. Um, starting tomorrow night, uh, you guys go to Regina. Um, follow that up next Tuesday with uh, one of the co-leaders of the conference, uh, West Branch. Um, turn that around the Friday after that, West Liberty. And then Saturday, you guys get a host, uh, as far as I know, the current Big East leader, mm -hmm. um, Preston. Um, now, Saturday's game will be in Bennett um, due to the sectional wrestling tournament here. Um, there's a doubleheader. The both varsity games are down there, and I'm guessing JV too. Yep. So it's a it's a quad quad day that day. Um, mid afternoon game, if I remember right. Um, it, on one end, it's like you play the best teams. You kind of want to do that. Uh, you hope uh, things work out, and this is where you kind of test yourself. Um, coming off some of these games and uh, getting ready for tournament, I'm guessing. Um, or potentially, I mean, you're going to see some of these teams possibly uh, down yeah. the road. We uh, haven't seen Regina yet, um, and then otherwise, West Liberty and West Branch. We got four more conference games remaining. We're two and eight in the conference. We've beat Tipton twice, and uh, you know we uh, really want to get some more wins, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Uh, West Liberty, we, we, we didn't play well at their place. Um, they got a lot of big, athletic, talented basketball players there. And obviously West Branch, the co-leaders in the conference, um, you know, they're, they got size, speed, and strength. Uh, they got good guard play. Um, they're going to be tough. So, you know, we just got to go out and, and uh, play good basketball. And uh, it'll be close going in the fourth quarter, hopefully, and hopefully our, our continued experience in close games will, and our work offensively in practice. Um, Coach Willie and I started playing defense and during practice, and um, we'll huddle up the, the other three guys, and we'll say, okay, um, we're going to either get them, you know, no shots. We don't want these guys to shoot. And... If that's what it takes to to bring some defensive intensity at practice, and that's what we have to do because the lack of defensive intensity in practice is what it hurts you because people always say you can't replicate that in practice. Well, we're going to do our best, and, you know, 
I think we can. So, as a fan of uh, Durant Wildcat uh, basketball, fans have to be excited to see these teams go against you guys here in the last week, week and a half. To, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd be if I was a fan here. So, four games at home, that'll be nice, and then one at Bennett, which is kind of a, a home game for us. Uh, and I hear that that gym can get pretty loud. I'm excited about it. I think everybody around here is. Um, I know uh, in talking to Coach Newman, and um, he know he, uh, the girls are really excited. You guys, I mean, this will be the first time that there's been a varsity competition, to my knowledge, since they closed in 2005, I believe, is when Bennett closed and became part of you guys in a way. Um, so yeah, that's a small Big East sort of feel, and. It's unique, so it'll be really nice. Are you guys wearing throwbacks at all? Any red bomber jerseys um, or anything? Or? No, you know, the boys wanted to, but it, we'd have to find the white uniforms. Because uh, Preston, I don't know, are there away uniforms, black or red? I'm guessing they're, they might be black, actually. Okay. But either way, I think we'd have to find <laughs> the white uniform. I'll leave that up to the athletic director. My job is just to get the boys ready to play basketball with whatever uniforms they're wearing. Well, we'll leave on that note and uh, talk about a couple games next week and uh, probably look ahead. We may want to break down Preston a little more, uh, give, throw some names out or whatnot that people look for, and uh, sure we'll have some more information on uh, that game too. So uh, for head coach Brian Timmerman, my name is Ryan Stonebreaker. Until next week, we'll see you at the game.